All right, so ladies and gentlemen, imagine if we are out to dinner and somebody's messing with the salt shaker, somebody a little bit younger, they're messing with the salt shaker. Mom and dad say, hey, leave the salt shaker alone. So the kid starts playing with the pepper shaker. <laughs> you ever seen that happen? Yeah. Okay, so now all of a sudden the kid's playing with the pepper shaker. Mom and dad say, hey, leave the pepper alone. So the kid picks up a fork and starts smacking his plate. <laughs> and so mom and or dad grab the fork and say, give me that. Would you just leave the fork alone? Stop messing with your plate. So the kid picks up a spoon and starts smacking the glass. <laughs> so then mom and or dad grabs the child by the hand and says, you listen to me? Leave everything alone on the table. Ever had that happen? Yeah. Do you think mom and dad are feeling more big and happy or small goals that? Small goals Right. So now parent has just said, leave everything alone on the table. Fantastic. So now the kid starts kicking the table. <laughs> What are the parents going to do next? Leave them out. They might take them outside, right? So parents are escalating. Why? Why are the parents escalating? Sure he is. He's doing exactly what he was told. They said leave the salt alone. I did. I stopped playing with the salt. You didn't say anything about the pepper? Well, now stop playing with the pepper. Well, I did. I was playing with the fork. Right? Because younger minds are literal. And how many times can I tell you what not to do that you will figure out what I want you to do? See, an adult, when you say leave the salt alone, the adult will understand what you actually mean is pay attention to what's going on. See, that's called an implicit explanation. Here's the undertext. This is what I said. This is what I meant. Have you ever seen that disconnect between adults and children? Yes. All the time. Daily. Right, because younger minds are literal. Teenagers and adults aren't. And that's the problem, the challenge, a lot of miscommunications between teenagers is all it is is energy flow. We're, we're in different places. But teenagers try to understand this is what you said, that's what you meant, but the teenagers sometimes pull a different context. And it causes more conflict because, well, you said this, but you do that. You're a hypocrite. They don't know how to articulate that to mom and dad. I love you, but I don't respect you, and I don't respect your life choices. That's a fantastic conversation to have at 11 or 12. And realize that shift starts to happen. Biologically, it should happen around 9 to 12 years old, in this age group. But it can also happen as young as 2 or 3 years old, depending on the life situation. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? Okay. So the really easy way to change that whole entire conversation is you've got the kid playing the salt shake. You say, hey, Billy, there's this thing that's called self-control. You ever heard of it? Fantastic. I love how you admit that you don't know something, but you don't know something because it saves so much time giving a high five. All right, now, Billy, there's this thing self-control. It's when my mind controls my body and my emotions. It's the idea of knowing what needs to be done and then doing it. Does that make sense? Oh, that makes sense. Fantastic. So is that self-control right now or is that salt shake control? Salt shake control. I think you're exactly right. Can you show me self-control? Here's what it looks like. Da 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 da. Feet together, hands your side, whatever the case may be. And then you challenge, okay, for 30 seconds, let's see if you can do self control and your microsite freeze. Make sense? Now, do you think that's going to change the conversation of what we're having as we're out to dinner? See, it takes leadership and it takes having a strategy before a crisis. Does that make sense, ladies and gentlemen? That's part of why I teach self defense. It's should you wait until there's an emergency to figure out the answers or have it ahead of time? That's the idea. But we've started to live in a society where people don't think ahead, they don't plan, they don't have contingencies, they wait till the heat of the moment, it breaks, they go, ooh. Does that make sense? See, right now what I'm talking about, the idea of more being happy or small cold sad. If you have a friend that feels small cold and sad outside, what is it they're going to share with you? Small cold sad feelings, do you like that? No. Can you change that? Yeah, help them feel more being happy, it's easy. You've got to recognize what's going on and then have a strategy. How can I help them feel more being happy? Hey, dude, you look like you're having a rough day. What's going on? He's said, help. That's magic phrase number 14. What can I do to help? We have 21 magic phrases. That's number 14. What can I do to help? It's one of the most powerful things after I love you and thank you. But let me ask you, ladies and gentlemen, do you see mom and dad, one eyebrow and no lips? You ever seen that face before? <laughs> Is that the time to ask for you? You see that face and go, hey, mom, can I go to Billy's? What's the answer going to be? No. No. <laughs> okay. What if, when you saw mom with that face, you went, hey mom, looks like you're dealing with something. What can I do to help? Do you think I might change things? Because the idea is you see mom or dad, or brother or sister or friend, small cold sad inside, what can I do to help? Now, mom and dad may say, go outside, take your brother to your sister, go to your room, clean your room, set the dinner table, clean the dinner table, tote that bar, lift that bail, adjust the mizzen mask. I don't know what it will be. Whatever they ask you to do, what do you do? Do it. Do it. Because then what happens? It helps them to feel a little bit more big and happy. Now, they may come back to you later and say, hey, you know what, I really appreciate I was dealing with something else, it wasn't you, and I really, I really it meant a lot to me if you asked help. Make sense? That's how we start changing the game. That's the whole point of this, this game. So ladies and gentlemen, really quick, let me ask you, how many of you would like to know a secret? How do you get mom and dad to do more stuff for you? Raise your hand. Okay, hands back down, please. 
How many of you would like to also have a secret of how to get mom and dad to stop telling you what to do all the time? Raise your hand. I didn't get everybody's hand. It's interesting. Okay, and what class, what age group are we? Fifth. Fifth grade? Okay. That's where the shift starts to happen. And that question, just so the two of you understand, that question I just asked tells me where somebody's at. That's what I call cat training mode versus dog training mode. Little younger ones mm -hmm. are in dog training mode. Dogs, you can use positive and negative reinforcement. Cat training mode, you cannot use negative reinforcement. If you get a cat, they're like, dude, seriously? If you get them a second time, they're done. Cats, you have to use positive reinforcement to get their attention. It has to be food, it has to be praise. With dogs, you don't have to. So younger people, when I ask that question, you want mom and dad to do more stuff to you, that's still a younger person. When it stopped telling me what to do, it usually happens about fourth grade on up. By about seventh grade, it's solid. Yeah, yeah, do more stuff for me is nice. Stop telling me what to do, oh yeah, I'm in on that. But does it make sense, ladies and gentlemen, if you show mom and dad you have more self-control, they'll let you do more stuff for yourself. Make sense, ladies and gentlemen? Absolutely. Fantastic, let's work on our self-control. Put those down and give me a circle, please.